What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode where we talk about ops kurang manis uh, in relation to World Diabetes Month. All right, we got Dr. Alex back on the show. Let's go. How's everybody doing? Now, in our previous exp- uh, episode, we actually spoke about diabetes, you know, how can one actually be diagnosed uh, with diabetes? And if you have diabetes, right, you know, it's not the end of the world, you know, you can actually change your lifestyle, change your diet, and you could lead a very, very normal life. I mean, provided you always, you know, follow the consultation of your doctor and not have too many cheat days. Lah. But today, ladies and gentlemen, really happy to have back at the show. Had an amazing conversation with him last week. And now he's back here again to fill us more in about all the sweet, sweet stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big warm welcome back. It is Dr. Alex. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hi again, Jin. Yes, hi again. Welcome back. I know like... Uh, I really appreciate uh, appreciated the last conversation we had. Uh, you know, yep. the previous episode. A lot of friends actually got in touch. Uh, those who are actually going through diabetes and stuff like that. Okay. Like, hey, you know, it's good that you're talking about it. And I'm like, hey, hey, yeah, okay. I feel like I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> My mom hasn't listened to it yet, though. But you know, very soon she will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So in today's episode, I think we kind of want to narrow a little bit more about you know the complications that can arise when someone actually is having diabetes. So I think the right way to say it is when someone is diagnosed with diabetes or someone who has diabetes and leaves it unattended, untreated and stuff like that. Now, just to recap a little bit, you know, there are ways to kind of look out for symptoms uh, to kind of understand that you have diabetes. Like, for example, you go to the toilet very yeah. frequently to urinate. Yep. And then people always question, like, how question, like, so how frequent? It's when it comes between your normal routine mm. that, you know, mm. is really, really like, you know, catch up your normal routine. That you're like, oh, before you want to do something, you have to always go to the toilet. That's sort of like a symptom already. But then again, yep. don't go to Google. Go to your doctor, have your blood test done, uh, get screened, and get the most accurate answer from your doctor. Now, once somebody has diabetes, the doctor Alex, I, I I understand that. Okay, look, I'm not gonna I'm I'm gonna be quite straightforward. When we saw all of the uh, COVID nineteen related uh, deaths, you know, they said that a lot of people with comorbidity uh, comorbidities have a higher chance of subsepting to the virus. Okay, yeah, and a lot of them, if you look at the data, they used to release all the data of uh, a lot of people who you know who did not make it. They were a lot of them had diabetes. Yep, and true. then when they have diabetes, right? It's like diabetes is on the top of the of the list, and then it's followed by hypertension, uh, this failure, kidney failure, heart failure. It leads to so many things. It is, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, what are some of the health complications that people living with diabetes are at risk of developing? Yeah. So maybe I'll start with the one that uh, you brought up, which is actually infections. COVID mm-hmm. is an infection, so. Um, when you have sugar which is not controlled, so I think what maybe maybe another way to start is if you don't control your sugar, yeah, yeah, because at the end of the day, just having diabetes in itself is not a death sentence. You see, the mm-hmm. thing what you said is completely true. The complications of diabetes, this disease, diabetes, the complications of of it are the problems, not the sugar level itself. You can go around walking with a sugar of 15, 18, 20 and still be okay one. Oh. But then the problem is if you have a sugar of 15, 18, 20 for a long time, you will yes. lead to complications. And the, 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 the thing about it is that it's completely, these complications are 100% preventable, 100% yes. avoidable. It's not a death sentence to say that, oh, once you get diabetes, sure, you will get complications and so on. No, in fact, you can have 0% complications if you look after yourself. And um, one of the complications is, of course, infections. Uh, so COVID, yes, very topical. People with COVID are known to have bad outcomes. They are more likely to be admitted. They are more mm-hmm. likely to require oxygen. They are more likely to end up in the intensive care unit. They are more likely to actually pass away as a result of having poorly controlled diabetes and COVID. And it's not just COVID, it's other infections as well. Fungus infections in your feet, skin infections, 
tuberculosis infection in your lungs. So any form of infection is a lot more common whenever you have poorly controlled diabetes. The next one I'm going to mention is actually heart disease because yeah. the number one killer for patients with diabetes, right? Two out of three patients with diabetes will die from heart disease. Oh, you know? wow. So okay. it's like, yeah, um, they used to say that, that diabetes is, is like having a heart attack already. You know, okay. in, the, in the older days of, of medicine, when, you know, it was uh, people were not controlling the diabetes so well, not aware so well, it's like saying, oh, once can I diagnosis of diabetes, they say it's a heart attack equivalent. That means it's right. as good as, as, as a death sentence as having yeah. a heart attack. But of course, mm -hmm. nowadays, right, we understand that it's all avoidable. You know, these yeah. things can be avoidable if you look after yourself, if you jaga yourself, if you kurang manis, okay? Yeah, yeah you, you will kurang complications, literally. Um, yeah, then of course, you know, having strokes is another uh, complication. Having blindness, it can affect your eyes, high sugar, it can affect your nerves so that you don't uh, have sensation anymore in your feet. It can give mm -hmm. you ulcers in your feet. It can give you kidney failure and you can end up on dialysis. So, um, you know, from the top of your head, having a stroke in your brain mm -hmm. to the bottom of your toes, and everything else in between, your eyes, your heart, your kidneys, your lungs, everything else in between, your skin, okay? Diabetes can affect. But the thing about it is it's all 100% preventable and avoidable if you control your blood glucose and you look after yourself, not just your blood glucose, but look mm -hmm. after yourself in your health in general. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, like, it's almost like uh, a lot of people... like. Like our previous episode, I think uh, you mentioned that a high number of people, or maybe we didn't talk about it, but a high number of people actually go undetected uh, with diabetes. They don't know that they have diabetes and they always think that they're fine. Mm. Uh, you mm. know, it's like, oh, uh, even people with, uh, who say, oh, no, la, it's okay. Well, I eat properly. I, 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 sometimes, I sometimes exercise. Yes, I might be a bit overweight, but I'm very active. How can I get diabetes and stuff like that? Yep. And actually, to be honest, there are some people that I know of uh, I mean, close relatives who have gotten diabetes and did not control. At first, they okay. The first time when they got diabetes, they felt like what you mentioned. Oh my goodness, it's a death sentence. Then they got scared, and then uh, you know, uh, didn't uh, eat at all. Like everything cut, 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 and then uh, you know, lost a lot of weight. And then yes, managed to bring the the sh blood sugar level down. But after that. When they did that already, right? They'd be like, "Ah, I'm successful. I'm gonna go back to my normal day of life." Then they have one cheat day. Then maybe they have two cheat days. Then maybe they have cheat never-ending cheat days. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think like one of my relatives, uh, you know, uh, actually lost uh, her sight. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as as I mean, like not immediately, but uh, like you mentioned, uh, you know, in the long run, and uh, I mean, like that's just based on our, my experience and and my knowledge, and and also. I like to ask because, you know, my mom used to tell me this all the time. Apparently, if you have diabetes and then let's say, for example, if you got your cuts in your legs and stuff like that, if you don't treat it, uh, it could lead to a very bad infection. And mm. then uh, having, you know, in the long run or eventually, if you don't take care of it, they have to amputate your leg. And it's like, I feel like, you know, uh, traditional people, right, will say, oh, you got diabetes, right? Be careful uh, later, you chop off your leg. <laughs> they, they, they say it like that, you know, they yeah. don't explain, you know, mm. it's, it's more mm. of like, when everybody wants to explain diabetes to somebody, it's either like, like what you mentioned, oh, you got diabetes, uh, oh, confirm, can get heart attack and die one. Or they'll say like, oh, you know, diabetes, uh, you lose your leg, that kind of thing. So I just want to dwell a little, a little bit more into these two areas, okay? Particularly with the leg part first, okay. Why would someone uh, with diabetes have to, you know, eventually not not eventually have to uh, amputate the leg due to what reason? Okay, so the thing about it, it all comes down to if you don't control your sugar. If yep. you control all this, is not an issue, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's like if you follow the law, the cops won't arrest you. But if you don't follow the law then you get in trouble, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the thing about it is that just a high sugar for a few seconds, for a few minutes, for, for short term, right? It's actually not that harmful. But if you are exposed to high sugar for, for months, for years, okay? That's oh. when it starts to damage all sorts of things. Now, specifically, if you want to talk about amputations, okay? The reasons are for that is number a uh, 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 few things. Lah. Number one, if you get an infection from a cut, right? Bacteria get in there. Bacteria are like human beings. They also like sugar, mm -hmm. right? So they can feed more whenever your blood is sweet, okay? So they can multiply more in that wound. 
number one. Okay, number two, um, you can get damage to the nerves in your feet. Okay, yes. so when you get damage into the nerves in your feet, then the wound also will heal much more slowly because there's no feedback, right? You can pour hot water on this person's leg uh, and they, oh. they will not be able to feel it. They can step on a thumbtack and come to clinic. Then only when we take off their shoes, we say, hey, what's this nail doing here? What's this kacha oh doing here? What's this thumbtack doing here? Remove it for them. So okay. yeah, and then the third thing is, um, you know, with the same reason why with diabetes, you can get um, blockages in your arteries in your heart. You can get blockages in the arteries in your legs as well. So when the circulation in your leg, the, the blood flowing to, to your leg is poor, okay, then you also have an unhealthy leg. You know? And so these are all multiple different factors that will lead to infection, poor blood circulation, uh, the nerves being damaged, which can lead to uh, amputations. And it's a, it's a sad thing to see. You know, sometimes... Yes. I have looked after patients over years mm -hmm. and I've seen them from newly diagnosed all the way towards, um, you know, very late stage diabetes. And one of the things which is um, you see less and less of them, literally you see less and less of them. You know, I, I, I don't know how to put it in a nice way, but you, you see them, then they lose one eye, then oh. they lose the other eye, mm -hmm. then they lose one toe, then two toes, then the whole foot is gone, then okay. half the leg is gone. They lose the function of their kidneys, right? right. They lose um, a little bit of their heart dies off from a heart attack. A little okay. bit of their brain dies off from a stroke. So you see yeah. less and less of them, you know? So it's, it's really uh, um, something when, when you've seen it, when you've seen people like this, you, you want to reach out and sort of say that, okay, this guy is at a later stage, but yep. all preventable. So we need to catch those guys who are who are just starting out in diabetes or who have had diabetes for a while, but all this can still be prevented. We want to, to, to reach out to them and sort of say, hey, look, look after yourself. Don't end up, you know, being literally half the man you used to be. Okay. And, and, and one, of, one of the ways is to, to, look, to look after yourself, even when you don't know when you have diabetes, is to basically get a regular doctor's checkup. Lah. I mean, yep. not as regular as every week or every day, mm. but at least every year, would you, would you encourage yeah. that? So, so I have this... Uh, ABC thing to remember what to do once a year, all right? This is the okay. bare minimum once a year that you need to do. So okay. A stands for A1C. A1C is your average glucose over a three-month period. The full name is HbA1c, but you know, sometimes your sugar goes up, down, up, down. You eat, yep. it goes up. You exercise, it goes down, okay? You're mm -hmm. under stress, it goes up. You take medicine, it goes down. So up, down, up, down, up, down. We normally, as doctors, like to see what the average is, and luckily, we have this test called A1C. Okay. So uh, at least once a year, you need to know what is the A1C. At least once a year, you need to get your blood pressure checked, okay? Because mm -hmm. diabetes is closely ring linked to high blood pressure. Then yes. C is cholesterol. At least once a year, you need to get your cholesterol levels checked because it also leads to heart disease and stroke and blockages of the arteries in the leg, right? D, you need to take a look at... Uh, your diet and your drugs. So you need to understand, okay, somebody needs to go through with you and sort of say, are you eating properly? And also your medicines, you need to understand what kind of medicines you take, what are the possible side effects, how many are you taking? E is for your eyes. Like you said, it can lead to blindness. It led to blindness in one of your relatives. So yes. the, the thing about it is that the blindness can come on uh, suddenly, right? Oh. But actually, if you, you went and had a camera examination, a doctor yes. examine your eyes on a regular basis, before mm -hmm. the sudden uh, uh, eye blindness attack, they can actually pick up the early signs and do something about it already. So minimum once a year, right? You need to get your eyes professionally checked by a medical, prof by a doctor, okay? F is for your feet. Once a year, you get a professional to look at your feet and test the sensation, test the blood flow, look in between the toes for infection, etc. Okay, because those, those things were, are, are common. Uh, G, I have to go to Malay, right? So A, B, C, D, E, E, eyes, F, feet. G is ginjal. Okay, okay, which is your kidneys. So your right. kidney test is a blood test as well as a urine test. And these can pick up very, very early signs of uh, kidney damage. Um, H is your heart. Okay, so heart, 
Uh, once a year, you're going to go and get your heart checked. Your doctor will do all the relevant tests to make sure that your heart is still doing okay. And finally, mm-hmm. I. I is for infections and immunizations. So infections, mm-hmm. you need to look out for skin infections. You need to look out for urine infections, which can be uh, monitored through a urine test. And immunizations, make sure you get your immunizations uh, or vaccines, right? I for yep. immunization, which is another weird word for vaccine. So your COVID vaccine, uh, most topical now. But other vaccines as well, vaccines against flu, vaccines against pneumonia. Right, because these are things that will help to further uh, protect you if you have diabetes. So if you go and do all these things, right, minimum, minimum once a year, okay, it will pick up early on whether you're having some of these complications already. And the whole point of picking it up is to prevent them, right? Uh, and then, of course, the other thing is, of course, it's good to do in all these tests, but when you do the test, right, then you go back home, you also need to control. Uh, you need to yeah. watch your diet, exercise, and take your medications as prescribed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and because we mentioned uh, the previous episode before, it doesn't mean you're immediately uh, pre-diabetic, you have to go on the medication uh, immediately. I mean, like as long as you control yourself, you'll be fine. So at the end of the day, I think like everybody looks at the word diabetes, oh, diabetes, they get scared already. Uh, but they, I think, I mean, like uh, that's the reason why we're doing this podcast. The more they know, the, the more they, yeah. they understand and it's a more informed decision on your own uh, decision to basically do what you need to do in order to prevent it from getting worse. Absolutely. And of course, uh, I think based on the la- previous episode as well, don't be your own doctor <laughs> and don't let Google be your doctor. Just go and look for Dr. Alex, okay? <laughs> <laughs> any diabetes doctor, yes. Any, any diabetes doctor. And okay, so we talk, I, I mean, like we talked about the feet thing because that was because uh, my mom used to tell me that, you know, uh, she used to just tell me this, like my mom says, like she always tells this, Jenna, mommy's a diabetic, uh, so you have a very high chance of being a diabetic, uh, so you better control your sugar, if not, you'll lose your leg. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, okay. And then, you, you know, you know, parents, uh, traditional parents, they always use fear to teach you, you know? And then I'll be like, oh, well, what about you, mom? You know, you've got diabetes, you know, you still have your legs. Yeah, mommy's very careful. I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, that, that already shows something. Mm, I mm. mean, she has been having uh, diabetes since she was 40, so almost like uh, 30 years, you know? Yep. Yep. And she's fine. She's got grandkids. She's doing gardening, messing up the whole entire garden. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I hope she doesn't yeah, so- do this. But <laughs> yeah, no, I think, so, I think Jin, yeah. you, need to, you need to get her on the show and just share. Like, I mean, obviously, she has looked after herself and she has um, sort of, uh, uh, how do I put it? She has actually put the effort in and said, hey, look, I care about myself, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I, I look after myself. Okay, because I think to me, right, that is the biggest factor uh, in terms of uh, getting complications is whether or not uh, the, the person with diabetes actually wants to jaga or not, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. My experience is, is that, you know, I, I have had highly educated professional fellows who are just too busy and they don't want to jaga themselves. Oh. They, they run into trouble. Right, they run into trouble. They need dialysis. Then they come running and trying to look for a solution, but it's too late. Right, they yeah. get ulcers in their feet. But then you get get matches from kampongs. Right, no education at all. But they 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 know how to look after themselves. Right, they right. eat clean. Right, uh, tauge ikan kambong and mm-hmm, a bit of rice, mm-hmm. and they avoid all the complications. So yeah, I think your mother's a great example. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, with I mean, moving on to to you know the cardiovascular disease, right? Heart disease. So, yeah. diabe- diabetic patients uh, or di- people diagnosed with diabetes uh, have an, uh, a risk of developing cardiovascular disease in the long term. Now, do all these things right go undetected, and then only when something happens to me, then be like, oh my gosh, it's too late. Yeah. So it's like it, it seems that way. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, the thing is a lot of effort and a lot of work goes into caring for somebody with diabetes uh, from the the patient's perspective. Okay. Testing their blood sugar, making sure that they eat clean and healthy, making sure that they take their medications, getting exercise, but also from the point of view of uh, the medical healthcare professional as well. You know, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I that I stated just now, that, that is something that we have to do, not just for one patient, but for every single patient that we encounter with, with diabetes. And sometimes we have to do it a bit more common as well. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's the whole crux of, of, of uh, diabetes, a lot of undetected disease. And the number one killer, like I said before, is actually heart disease. Now, if you have uh, diabetes, uh, let me just give mm-hmm. you an example. If you have diabetes, right, what the statistics actually say is that if you don't control your diabetes, you minus off six years from your life. Ooh. Okay, if you have diabetes plus heart disease, okay, uh-huh. you minus off ten years. 
And if you have diabetes plus heart disease plus kidney disease, you minus off 12 years from your life. Now, you know, six years is pr- a lot. A lot. A lot, <laughs> a yeah. A lot. Right. And if you have diabetes and heart disease, it's almost one decade gone. You know, it's, it's, <sighs> it's not being with your family for one decade. Lah. You're dying one decade earlier than you should. So, oh. That hit me a little bit. I don't know why. I yeah, of, I'm immediately so sorry. It just, I don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just uh, it just reminds me of like oh, you know, my daughter, family, mom. No, and all. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like um, yeah, it's 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 a reality. So when when you um have diabetes, you have to juggle yourself and you have to go and look and see whether you're developing these complications. And then right. you you have to attack, especially for cardiovascular disease, heart disease. Yes. I mean we tend to attack it from multiple angles, not just in terms of like controlling your sugar, okay, but every other risk factor for heart disease that you have, we try our best to uh, address it. So smoking, you got to stop smoking, right? Uh, cholesterol, even if you have a slightly raised cholesterol, okay, we tend to be very aggressive with, with treating the cholesterol. Again, with blood pressure, if your blood pressure is slightly high, because we understand that these things are Sikit sikit jadi bukit, a bit high glucose, a bit high cholesterol, and a little bit high blood pressure. Okay, although they are a little bit all in themselves, when you add them up together, it can actually uh, lead to something which is significant. So we tend to to be uh, quite uh, jump on top of the cholesterol and say, hey, no, 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 we gotta make sure you control this. Jump on top of the blood pressure and of course jump on top of the sh- blood sugar and sort of say, hey, no, 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 we we gotta make sure that you control these. Right. Um, nowadays, there are also medications as well which directly prevent uh, uh, heart disease, independent of whether it, uh, your sh- what your sugar is, etc. So those those are the uh, things that we we try to prescribe for our patients as well. Um, should, should should like so should one in, okay? So when you mention medication, yeah, should one individual be afraid of taking medication because like you know, sorry like, I have to bring this up again, but some people traditional like, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and sugarcoat it. Old people. They'd be like, oh, I don't want to eat all this medication because I don't know what they're feeding me. You know what I mean? They, they always assume that all these tablets are like, they're, they, they always feel like they're guinea pigs e- eating things that they don't know. You know. And they'd be like, oh, I eat so, eat so much for what? You know, thinking that these medications will kill me instead of <laughs> diabetes, that okay, kind of me. thing. Do you have those type of people, those type of mindset as well? Uh, no, plenty, plenty. And I mean, I think it's just about understanding that if you don't, at the end of the day, it's not as though all my patients need to take medicines. Yes, okay. understand. At the end of the day, what I look at is whether your uh, sugar is under control. Because mm-hmm. if your sugar is under control just by healthy, clean living, right? You diet and you exercise in, in a proper way, okay? And yep. your numbers are look good. Then I feel very happy actually because this is, this is themselves directly investing in their life and getting their mm. sugar under control and I'm fine with that I'm, I'm, and all doctors are fine with that at the end of the day it's, it's, it's um, good control which matters right yes now if, if when you get older and your eyesight gets poorer your yep. hair gets grayer mm-hmm. your body also gets older and sometimes it needs a little bit of help to control the sugar your pancreas your liver okay are, are older, right? You, right. you, you don't have a, a 40 year old pancreas and liver anymore. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. you now have a 60 year old pancreas and liver and there sure is some loss of function one, you know, it's just like balding, it's just like getting poorer eyesight as you get older, it's just like getting some looser teeth as you get older. These things yeah. happen. And so in, in that occasion, you may need medications to help you. So you shouldn't see the medication as fighting against you or a failure on your part. You know, getting white hair, you know, you don't make a big fuss out of it. It happens, right? Okay, yes. Having to wear specs, it happens, right? At mm-hmm. some point in time, you need to go to the dentist to pull out a loose tooth. It happens, right? So mm-hmm. you might find in your diabetes journey that there, there may reach a point where you will need medication. And then you might need extra medication as time goes on. You might need to start to need jabs at some point. Okay, but mm-hmm. these are all there so that none of those nasty things, the chopping off the leg, la, the dialysis, la, the blindness, the heart disease, all of it is there to help prevent that. You know, because that's what we, we want to look at, whether or not the sugar is controlled. Sugar controlled by itself, okay. Right? Sugar yeah. just controlled by diet, exercise, okay. But if you need medicine, take the medicine. La, you know, it's, it's really mm-hmm. there to help you. Okay. Okay. And and okay. So, uh, I, I, with regards to exercise and like you know, 
uh, of course, I mean, if you, I, I think you would agree with me on this one. Uh. Don't wait until you get diabetes only exercise. Uh. I mean, everyone should be having <laughs> regular exercise. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking, I, I want to I wanna address the, the fact that if someone has already been diagnosed with diabetes, um, I know, yes, part of uh, one way to, to, to take care of their sugar levels is by dieting. And obviously, the next one that comes really, really commonly is exercise. Yep. What kind of exercise do you encourage uh, patients to do? I think is, is, is walking enough? Or do they need to do an exercise that gets their heart rate pumping to like, you know, 180 beats per minute and sweating profusely, you know, every, like at least four to five times a week? Uh, do they have to play badminton or can they just take it easy or something that is basically uh, comfortable uh, for their pace? No. So the thing about diabetes treatments, um, including diet, including exercise, including medications, is that when you come and see us, mm -hmm. we tailor make it to you. Uh. Right? We personalize it to you. There's no one size fits all. It's not to say that, okay, uh, you know, uh, uh, you need to bersenam untuk uh, satu jam setiap hari, that kind of thing, the matje will faint, right? <laughs> if, they're, if she's okay. 85 years old, right? I'm yeah. just happy that she's able to get up and do a, a little bit of walking and arm swinging in the garden. Mm -hmm. So, but if you're younger, if like, let's say you're 35 years old with diabetes, then what I would say is, yeah, you need to try and uh, exercise as much as you can. We try mm -hmm. to make it start slow and go and advance slowly, right? Maybe 5% increment in uh, per week. We try to right. make it personalized as well. So for example, if you are not somebody who uh, has access to outdoors activity, Okay, yep. uh, then we recommend things which are more indoors. Okay, if you're not somebody who, if you are somebody who has arthritis in the knees, okay, maybe mm -hmm. bicycling might be better than walking. For example, uh -huh. cycling, or, or cycling seems to be. Ah, yeah, a very you are into trend. it now, right? Yeah, so <laughs> we, we're very <laughs> personalized, one. We're very, very yeah. personalized with how we approach uh, uh, exercise, you know. Uh, you also mentioned what if this patient got only one leg, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. We still recommend exercise, but different types of. Uh, exercise. What if this uh, uh, person uh, has a high risk for falling over? Then it's a different sort of thing. So it's it's very personalized. We would always encourage exercise. The younger you are, the more intensive exercise we may recommend. But as you grow older, we recognize that, yeah, maybe your eyesight not so good, your balance not so good. So we don't push uh, uh, so hard as well. So there's no sort of one size fits all. I should stay, I yeah. You know, it's, it's not necessary that everybody needs to uh, pump their heart until they're drenching in sweat because some older older patients with diabetes can't get that, okay? But um, we still encourage them to be active as much as possible in a safe right. way. Okay. It, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's re more reassuring to hear la, rather mm. than, you know, because if it's a one size fits all, right, then everybody can be a doctor already. They're going to be like, ah, no, don't worry, no. la, my, my doctor tell me this, it's the same for you and stuff like that. So I hope uh, for those of you listening, uh, you know, if you're going through it, uh, diabetes yourself, I, I hope this kind of gives you a, a, a clearer picture to make, to understand that every different person is a unique individual. Yeah. So not yeah. there's not not everybody's the same and stuff and, like that. Now yeah, and, sorry, go ahead. And even diet as well. Even diet mm -hmm. we we have to understand and personalize as well, you know. I mm -hmm. one thing about Malaysia is is we all eat slightly differently. So when I see patients uh, who are Chinese, who are Indian, who are Malay, right? Mm -hmm. I understand, you know, I'm not going to talk to uh, this un this Chinese auntie about eating idli and mm -hmm. Ose and Dal. Right? Yep. Whereas my Indian Amma who comes and see me, ah, yes, right? How many idli can I eat? How many Tose can I eat? Those are relevant right. questions to them. Whereas okay. you talk about how many bowls of rice with, with uh, um, you know, your Chinese and Malay patients, etc. So again, even with diet, it's, it's highly personalized as well. You know, um, um, I've treated patients from Kampung Kampung and we talk about Tauge and Ikan Kambong and Nasi. Then I've, you know, urban patients who sort of come with very specific, uh, they want to know which, which supplement and which milk powder is good for their diabetes. Again, so very personalized. You know, no point oh. talking about milk powder supplement to, to aunties, in, uh, to maches in kampongs, right? Yeah. And again, the medications uh, now that we have, we used to have very few medicines to treat diabetes. Now we have so many, you, right. a lot of variety. So we can really personalize the, the treatment for you. Okay, some, okay, here's another question, doctor. I mean, like, People say, uh, some people also have this uh, thinking, la, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm just saying in general, not pinpointing anybody. All right, you have diabetes. All mm. right, uh, your sugar level is high. Mm. All right, you have, to go you have to go vegetarian. Is that the right mentality? You know? No, vegetarian, you see, the thing about vegetarian is that 
uh, you need to understand it's not always just about vegetables. Yes. So, for example, okay. noodles can be vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Rice with soya sauce can be vegetarian. So you can have a huge big mountain of rice, pour vegetable curry over it and be vegetarian, but still be eating too much and still be eating too much carbs. I see. Yeah, so so vegetarian in itself does not necessarily guarantee uh, that it's actually healthy. You might end up eating loads and loads and loads of carbs. And sometimes to make uh, a vegetarian diet uh, more palatable, you end up adding lots of salt uh, as well. And some of these... Yeah. Fake vegetarian to, to, to basically things make the just, yeah. yeah yeah to exactly. make it more tasty la, basically yeah, la, yeah, la. Oh. you know this mock 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 meat in a can etc there may be lots of salt and sugar added to it also you know so uh, vegetarian does not necessarily equate to to uh, healthy automatically I mean yes many vegetarians if they do it properly uh, yeah. yeah you know my brother is a is a vegetarian uh, mm-hmm. but he he does does things uh, very properly um, I see. Uh, but it does not automatically mean that vegetarian means, uh, you know, uh, healthy lah. I see. Mm. And so that means in other words, like, so apart from just taking, uh, in, in par- apart from investing more time to understand about your body, uh, you should also take some time to understand about the food that you consume as well. Because yep. I think like, you know, who would have known that rice could basically be processed in your body and turn into sugar? You know what I mean? Mm, I didn't know that. For us, as we go online on Facebook and rice is the soul of Chinese food, you know what I mean? If you're Asian, you know, if you don't eat rice, you're a failure to the family or you're a dishonor to the family and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You you had a Chinese New Year video, I remember one time about this (laughs) overweight guy and, and his family was forcing him to eat more rice later. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why no girlfriend yet etc yeah you yeah, absolutely yeah. get get it correct <laughs> um, yeah I mean coming coming to that again you know uh, um, again when I see a patient I have to take them where they are so I think the first thing when you talk about rice is is to understand that it's actually carbs um, so not not everybody can understand the concept of carbs but things which are starchy I sometimes start from there so noodles uh, um uh, rice, pasta, yeah. etc. So it's educating on that level and trying to sort of gauge uh, uh, how much carbs they are eating. And then as they progress, right, they can understand that there are different types of carbs. There are carbs which are absorbed faster, carbs which are absorbed slower. Um, mm-hmm. Then also there's how you mix carbs with other foods because if you mix carbs with protein and fat, the absorption of the carbs can be different and glycemic right. index, etc. So yeah, it's it's again very personalized uh, as well. But yeah, in general, you know, uh, <laughs> don't overdo the rice. You know, not don't don't be like the the that. Uh, that song lah that you you had for Chinese yeah. <laughs> Eat more means what up your car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the Wong Fei Hong song. Yeah, that Wong Fei Hong song. Oh my goodness, that was so long ago. Yeah, was but, a while okay. ago, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um you know before before we wrap things up, I, I know that we talked about this a bit earlier on, but you know it's good to wrap wrap up with this again. Uh brings me back to the A B C D E F G H I uh uh classification that you were mentioning. Mm. But uh, are there any medication options that can help diabetic patients manage uh, other diabetic related complications at the same time? Yeah, I mean definitely. Definitely we um the thing is, diabetes is such a worldwide health problem. Okay, yep. there, there's been a lot of investment into um, many, many different things to help patients with diabetes. Um, there are apps now that help you to track your medicine. There are apps now that help you to track your sugar. Okay, oh, there are wow. devices that help you to continuously monitor your sugar. There mm-hmm. are uh, uh, newer medications as well that directly uh, not just impact the diabetes, but also impact your heart health. Uh, and mm-hmm. your kidney health as well. Okay, mm-hmm. so you now we now live in an age where there are many, 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 many medications where we can even personalize it. If you are di- if you have diabetes and you're overweight, there are medicines that can help you to lose weight. If you right. have diabetes and you're thin, then there are medicines that help to avoid you losing further weight. Okay. Right. If you are uh, having diabetes and uh, already have heart disease, there are medicines to help you protect against that. There are medicines that uh, specifically help to protect the eyes. There are medicines that specifically help to protect the kidneys. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can really uh, personalize nowadays. We even have medications that do multiple functions. So uh, 
uh, lose uh, sugar, lower the sugar, sorry, lower the blood pressure, uh, lower the uh, rate of kidney disease, lower the rate, uh, lower your weight as well. So again, we, we now, uh, you know, um, patients with diabetes now have a, a large amount of medications that they, they could possibly be on, but they need to see their doctor to, to help to select the best one for them. Now. So it's, it's highly personalized. Yes, everybody, please uh, get in touch with Dr. Alex, okay? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> any diabetes doctor, yeah, yeah. Any, any, any diabetes doctor. I think like, that's the best, uh, best way. I just feel, um, to me, I've seen my mom progress. Uh, I just have to say that you got to trust your doctor. No doctor is, you're not going to see, no doctor is going to, don't have that mentality of like, doc, you just go see a doctor just to, for them to take your money. No, I don't think so. They have a responsibility. They took an oath to basically, you know, take care of people uh, for the better of mankind. Uh, it's so funny now. Like, you know how you know how our Asian parents. Oh, please go study to become a doctor. Then when you ask them to go see a doctor, no need lah. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's 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 just one of those things. So yeah, I mean sometimes um, you know I I get patients who ask me, oh this medication that you give me will it will it spoil my kidney? I say why why would I want to do that? Why would I want to give you nice. medicine that will you know uh, spoil your kidney and then you will curse and swear at me, right? You know. So, uh, uh, yeah, trust your doctor. I mean, have a good, good relationship with your doctor. I think trust is, is really uh, important. We are really trying to help you. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, um, yeah like it's down to trust. And it's also down to you have to jaga yourself. Lah, you know? Self-discipline. Yeah, self-discipline. self-discipline is yeah. very important. Uh, and uh, I, I think, like, uh, I mean... Again, Law, I, to, 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 to stress on this again, I feel like uh, if you have been diagnosed with diabetes, uh, that, that's not the end of the world. But if you haven't, doesn't mean that you can take things lightly. Say, yay, I'm diabetes free. My family have no, none of them have diabetes so I'm, and stuff. That's why I think like, you know, there's this, uh, there's this campaign called Ops Kurang Manis is to basically mm. reduce the sugar and everything that you, you, you put in your food. I think like a lot of people do not understand that it's not only that, 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 uh, that drink that you order from the mamak stall that has sugar in it mm. that you can order mm. Kurang Manis. Mm. Food has sugar. Mm. I mean like your, your, your sweet and sour pork has sugar. Yep. Otherwise it won't be called sweet. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, your pizza has got sugar. Che- uh, like your, everything has got sugar. It's just that we don't know because I feel, I feel like I, yeah, I, you know, I feel to be honest, uh, this is my personal opinion. Sure. Uh, I feel in Malaysia we are we, we lack food education. Mm. <laughs> there, there should mm. be a lot more food education for people to kind of understand what they're consuming. Yeah. Because yep. everything has been just marketed to be this tastes the best. This is the food for this. This is the food for champions. Mm. Eat this if you want to grow healthy. You know what I mean? Mm. There was never there, there has never been an education of like, you know eat what your body needs and, and stuff like that. So that's, that's what I feel that's been lacking only because uh, I have uh, studied abroad before and, you know, all the advertisements abroad are very socially responsible because they don't want to get sued because abroad, uh, anybody can sue for anything. Ma. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, if you, you slip on the floor in a restaurant, you can sue the person and if you misadvertise a healthy food also, that, that healthy food company can be sued as well. So, I just feel that um, I think uh, to bring it back to the, the topic that we're talking about today is number one, self-discipline. Number two, take care of yourself. Even though you're not diabetes, go and get uh, screened. That, that, that A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, S, O kind of gives you, you like, by you saying that, right, for me, I think I can remember A is A1C, B is, uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Self-test. Uh, self test. It's like SPM, you know. Okay, A is AIC. B is uh, blood pressure. Ah, uh, blood pressure, correct or not? Correct. C is cholesterol. Yep. Then D is diet. Then E is eyes. Then uh, F is feet. Foot. Yep. Foot fungal Excellent. infection. Sorry, yeah. fungal infection. Feet. Yes. Then G yeah. G is ginjal, yeah. uh, kidney infection. G H is heart. Then I is immunization. Look, man. Hey. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna well give myself done, a big round of applause. I think. Uh, it's e- it's so it's so cool that you put it that way. Yeah, if I yeah. can, I'm, okay, when it comes to me, right, I am damn bad at remembering things. If I can remember, hey, no, it, you did really well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> if I can remember it, I think the other person, uh, the other person listening on the other can do so as well. So uh, please remember, uh, it doesn't hurt to get screened every year, even if you have diabetes or do not have diabetes. Uh, it's not. It doesn't. There's no. There's no wrong in consulting your doctor more more than usual more than the recommended usual. 
uh, if you are more concerned about your own well-being because I believe that uh, like what you mentioned some people tend to always invest in career and growth and money but the number one thing that people fail to invest in and when they do so it's too late is in their own well-being mm. so uh, mm. yeah, yeah. But, so, but before we end this conversation or and, and this episode because you know we're going to have one more last episode ha! would you like to yep. say anything to our, our listeners um yeah, so I think if you're out there, if you have uh, diabetes, remember to look after yourself and remember the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Minimum, minimum is once a year. Um, if you have, if you know somebody with diabetes, you can support them by sort of uh, saying that, you know, uh, remember to sort of uh, look after yourself, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And I think, you know, we have been... Uh, sharing the sort of Gurang Manis kind of uh, um, idea, which I think yep. is great, you know, because Gurang Manis is, is on many levels. Gurang Manis, uh, Gurang the Manis in your blood, Gurang mm-hmm. the Manis in your body, Gurang the Manis in your food. And I think just Gurang the Manis in, in our society uh, in general, I think that would be a, a great thing. So I guess that's, um, that's my summary, my conclusion for, for today. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I remember uh, we're going to be having one more episode. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Dr. Alex, and we can ask them in the next episode, you can reach out to us uh, on our socials. It's at Mamak Sessions. Should I spell it out? It's M-A-M-A-K-S-E-S-S-I-O-N-S. Or you can DM me directly on my Instagram. It's at Ginny Boy. Do you, have a, do you have an Instagram handle, Dr. Alex? Uh, it's not active one. Uh, it's, it's okay, basically. okay, cool. <laughs> the questions will come to me and I'll ask you next time. Since you <laughs> asked, since you asked, there is actually uh, another uh, project called A Doctor, E H D O C T O R, which mm-hmm. will come active soon. And if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me through A Doctor, E H D O C T O R. Yeah, so that, that would be my uh, Instagram handle, handled by these guys lah, from another studio. Nice, nice, awesome. Thank you very much uh, for your time again, Dr. Alex. And then we'll speak to you again next time. Bye.